I recreated Paz Lu's insane warp transition, but surely this is an effect that a lot of people know how to do, right? After hours of searching, I can confidently say that nobody else knows how to make this. So I'm going to give you every effect, every layer, every trick, everything that you need to make Paz Lu's insane warp transition. First things first, we're going to rotor brush out the main subject to separate the background. This way the warp effect won't affect the subject. So just select the rotor brush tool and do a quick rotor brush. Turn the feather up to about 10 and the contrast all the way to zero. After you've frozen that, we wanna export it with a see-through background. Click on file, export, add to render queue. So you wanna change the format to QuickTime and the channels to RGB plus alpha. Then just click on render. After that, drag the render back onto your clip above the roto brush and then delete the roto brush from the bottom layer. You should be left with a full layer and a subject only layer. Now the effects won't hit the subject causing a really janky ass effect. So from now on, we're going to be adding every effect to this bottom layer, starting with S underscore warp fisher. This is just going to stretch the edges out at the beginning to help center the warp and guide the other effects. Have you ever thrown a rock into the water and seen the ripples across the top? That's what we're trying to recreate with the effect S underscore warp puddle. This one's probably going to have the biggest impact on the quality of the overall effect. So just bear with me while we go through its settings. We'll kick off with the easy one ones, the ones that don't need keyframing. So turn your rel height to 1.170, the phase speed to 0.01, the inner radius to 68, and both the inner and outer softness to about 20,000. Now for the keyframes. But before I start, just know that none of the keyframes across any of the effects have to be any longer or any shorter than the rest. They should all match each other right on from start to end. So with that, there are three settings that we need to apply. The amplitude goes from 0.4 down to zero. The frequency is 2.22 to 1.62. And the phase start goes from zero to 0 0.255. Thanks to this, the other effects will really pull together and it will make the impact from the last clip flow over to the next, making for a buttery smooth transition. Speaking of butter, I have the source and it is called Turbulent Displace. This is going to warp the screen in random swivels as opposed to ripples. Now, haven't we got enough warps, Kalen? Shut up. This is my tutorial and I'll say when it's enough. Like before, we will start off with the settings that don't need to be keyed. So up the size to 185 and the complexity up to two. Now frame the amount from 85 all the way down to zero. And then the evolution from zero all the way up to 280. Now, because I'm such a nice guy, I want to let you in on another tip. While I was adding this displacement, I noticed that it did not really stay centered because my subject kind of moves around. So to get around this, you can keyframe the offset. This is really just telling the turbulent where to center out from, and it always looks better when that spot is underneath your subject. Now, after all that trouble, I will tell you that this isn't actually a necessary effect. But if you don't add it, I will find you because it just looks so goddamn good and it really blends everything together. Speaking of blending, guess what guys? Another warp. No, I'm just joking. Instead, we're actually going to use S underscore distort chroma. I guess you can call this a warp, but it's more of an effect that adds some variety to the color instead of the position. And it's really simple. Just change the blur lens to 260 and the rotate warp DIR to about 68. Then just key the amount from one zero. It really just helps warps the color a bit since the last couple of effects don't really do that. Now, if you had a fisheye on any of your clips, you might notice that it doesn't really match the last clip or it's just completely fucked up from the warping. Don't worry, it doesn't matter in the slightest because we're just going to import a fake fisheye overlay. You just want to make it a little bit smaller than the original fisheye so that you can't tell that it is an overlay. This is going to stop the fisheyes from clashing between each clips and if you mess around of the scale keyframes you can actually make your transition really smooth so you won't be able to tell that there's a cut in this clip here i actually keyframed the scale of the fisheye just to make it come in as the transition hit and it made it look very smooth 
Now, you must be looking at your transition thinking, oh, I'm so glad that's over now. I've just got an absolute dope transition, but you're wrong because I've got some sauce and seasoning that will make it even better. We're just gonna add an adjustment layer that is eight frames long. We're gonna do this because we just want four frames on either side of the transition. Then just add the effect CC radial blur. Now, instead of a normal blur, we can make this one go in specific directions, which will just undoubtedly tie together all the effects that we've added so far. So here's where it gets interesting. If you're doing a zoom transition, either in or out, you wanna change the mode to fading zoom. You're gonna keyframe the amount from zero, then go one frame before the cut and change it to 50. Then go one frame over on the cut and change it to negative 50, and then go to the end and change it to zero. The reason we do this is because the number 50 is the opposite zoom direction that we're going for on the second clip. And so what we have to do is as it hits, just change it to the complete opposite and then keyframe back to zero again. And it does a really nice smooth transition. If you're doing a rotate transition, you actually wanna change the type to rotate, but the keys here get really aggressive. You actually wanna change the amount just down to five and negative five, then back to zero. But if you're doing a zoom and a rotate because you're just absolutely crazy, you can actually duplicate the effect and then just key both of them. After that, you are now one of the very few people who know how to make Pilots lose insane warp transition from every effect to every key. Since you stayed the entire video, I wanna give you one final tip that'll really elevate this effect to the next level. And I promise you, I saved this for the people who didn't click off my video because I knew if you knew this, it would put you leagues above everyone else. So add a second adjustment layer, but this one's going to be very special. You wanna count back five frames before the impact and then you want to go 10 frames in front of the impact and then cut it in both spots and then keyframe the amplitude from zero to one back down to zero making sure that it hits on the cut and then in the lumetry color under the basic correction we want to keyframe the exposure the exact same way so from zero up to one and back down to zero. So now you're probably looking at your effect. It looks pretty cool, but you've got these edges here. This is from the shake and it's from the radial blur. You've just got to put on a motion tile, drag it on top of the rest of them. And then these lines will all go away. And just like that, you are now one of the very few people who know how to make Paz lose insane warp transition. Before I sign off, I have a confession to make. This video was posted to my community almost a week in advance. So if you want early access to videos like this, I suggest that you join it down below. But that was a full breakdown of Paz lose warp transition that you won't find anywhere else. We went super deep into every effect and every key and now you're one of the very few people who know how to make it. So if you're still with us, thank you very much and leave a comment down below for what you want to see next.